Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my show, Future Friday. In today's episode, we're going to take a look at the most interesting topic, fusion power. So let's dive right into it. So just as last episode of Science Thursday, I talked about fission, where you break things apart. This is invert of it, where you attach things, basically combine two light elements, as in uh, tritium and deuterium, combine them and then you get helium and one extra neutron and as i said like if you calculate the weight of these two parts versus weight of these two parts there will be a bit of loss now this loss is a bit more than what you get in uh, basically uranium loss so this gives you a lot of power and this if you want to calculate how much energy you're gonna get we have einstein to thank for that e equal to mc square now be mindful fusion can be done with almost everything uh, from in periodic table given from top as in like from hydrogen to helium go down go down till iron you can't go below iron or even at iron because the moment a star starts to fuse iron it absorbs more energy than it gives out it's not endothermic uh, exothermic anymore it becomes endothermic it takes energy so star dies so when you see, uh, hear people say like you know first it will go through hydrogen burning phase it burns through the hydrogen then it starts to burn through helium it can keep going until it reaches in a stage in periodic table where there is iron the moment it reaches iron the star is dead from the inside now other things can blow it apart before that but if you are writing a sci-fi novel copyright me uh, show them that they have helium reactor or something heavier than that because that inherently gives more power helium specifically to give you an idea or context how much powerful helium reaction would be is that if our sun started burning helium which it will do when it starts to grow its size will grow as uh, you know as large as earth's orbit and heck it can go even further than that so that's fusion you can do fusion till iron in the periodic table and generally hydrogen is the easiest to fuse so why the interest well the fuel required for that it's not like thorium even though india has a lot of thorium reserve it's not like it's just laying around there you can't just go and collect it it requires severe mining it's super abundant and it's abundant in the universe it's not like you know it's a we are lucky to find it here in this planet you will find it everywhere so it's quite abundant quite cheap second this is the crucial aspect this is the sole reason why anybody even cares about this is 24 into 7 power basically what we call base load capacity the solar even though they are reaching a point where we call price parity more about it in my video basically the cost of solar energy is reaching a point where more more and more solar farms will be made because it will be cheaper to produce electricity that way now everything is awesome about that only problem is what you're going to do at night wind is nowhere near uh, price parity and uh, th uh, while when you can use uh, wind power for uh, serious load it can provide some base load capacity does not have enough capacity to provide base load capacity for the whole planet or like in you know, a whole country's economy so for that reason base load provision of this is very crucial now second we come to it has no pollution basically it does not emit co2 or methane or pollutants or anything dangerous so that's awesome and this is very cost saving aspect for us is that it can be connected to current grid like a fusion power plant will not look any different from fusion power plant it will look just like this and it, you will just have a you know giant power cable coming out of it basically grid connection so this is why there is interest it will work on existing grid it does not require giant power storage it will work with whatever we have already it provides base load capacity no pollution so everything is awesome now let's do pro con this thing pro it has raw power now this is crucial aspect of it even if you take fission and you make very good reactor out of it uh, i haven't come across any designs of reactor where you are expected to get more than like you know um, 10 20 gigawatt like generally it's uh, advisable to make multiple small reactor where you can contain the uh, accident if it happens so uh, inherently the footprint of that power plant will become ludicrously large now of course it's nowhere near the footprint of a solar power plant but inherently it's very big so and the fact that hydrogen is a abundant b when it fuses it gives out relatively more energy than what uranium gives it's inherently more powerful as as in multiple times more powerful not hundreds of times more powerful it's not like going from chemical to nuclear it's like chemical to better chemical so basically the difference between atom bombs and hydrogen bomb 
and it's super safe. Now, crucial web fusion, as I talked to you, is the best energy source we have. Only problem with that is it's a flat out intolerant of any mistakes. Second, it gives out radioactive waste and the radioactive waste aside from thorium reactors are radioactive for thousands of years to millions of years. So suffice to say it's ludicrously dangerous to uh, use that. Now, right now we are stuck in a between a rock and a hard place is that uh, if we use coal power plant, we pollute the atmosphere that every single human breathes in or we use a nuclear fission where we can have we have to isolate an area where nobody goes in. I mean, even if somebody goes there, they die from radiation poisoning. However, it has no effect on wildlife. Look at Chernobyl. It has become a freaking uh, wildlife sanctuary because plants can handle radiation much higher level than we can. And the fuel is super cheap. So there is no risk of that. So safety first, awesome. And fuel can be extracted from seawater. I'll uh, talk to you about more of that. Now cons are, it is still radioactive. The waste that is coming out of it is not radioactive. The reaction itself is idiotically radioactive. Like this part I have seen many places skipped sort of, like uh, the reaction that you are doing gives off neutron. Neutron, as you many of you know, alpha, beta, gamma, it's gamma ray. Basically it, it can emit uh, gamma radiation, heck it can flat out make other things radioactive. Basically, if you have a chamber like this and if gamma radiation is releasing from here, over time, the panels that you have will become irradiated. This is a serious concern with this. And uh, what I'm referring to here is neutron flux. This is the core reason why nobody can like, you know, just uh, put normal steel here. Like this inherently is so complex that uh, to put something there, it has to be designed to handle more radiation than it comes uh, gets from normal nuclear fission reaction because the density of neutron coming out can exceed that. And it's very complex, like none of these things cost less than like 10 million dollars uh, none of this is like you know even 10 million billion dollars like the amount of money we have spent just trying to make a experimental reactor is ludicrous now many of you might say okay that's true with every technology like you know as technology gets further and further along uh, we might get uh, you know cheaper and cheaper economy of scale kicks in however this will not happen with this i'll show you why then we come to the cost aspect. Now this is crucial. As I already mentioned, solar has reached a point where it's reaching what we call price parity. So it will be cheaper in future to generate your electricity from solar. That's why India already finished, uh, I think we have already reached 3000 megawatt capacity. And one of our fa farm recently finished uh, was 800 megawatt. Another 10,000 megawatt farm is just being built in Rajasthan. It should be finished by 2025. And China is also building uh, solar farms that are like rated for 20,000 megawatt or something like that. So suffice to say, as you can see, Ch China does not care about environment, but they have to care about economics. It's becoming cheaper to produce electricity using solar cells. So, and if you have desert or unhumid, uh, sorry, uninhabitable lands, basically where people cannot live, you will be in a scenario where it like, just use it for solar power. Even because most of humanity's power consumption happened during the daytime. So it's generally wise to do so. The reason why I said the cost of this will not be cheap inherently is because this has what's called superconductors and cryogenics. Now, how they are achieving fusion, A, is they are creating a plasma. As many of you know, plasma is the fourth state of matter. Basically, electron is split from the nucleus. So what they get is raw and it is electronically charged. Basically, it has positive or negative charge. Benefit of that, we can control it using magnetic field. Now, this is that magnetic field generator. Now, that's a cut section of a tokamak reactor. This is an advanced tokamak reactor design where they are twisting the magnetic field such a way that uh, at the point of twist where they were twisting, they'll get a lot of fusion. And when I said the fuel is abundant, that's mathematically true, however, not absolutely true. The reason for that is that it uses a rare isotope. Uh, when you take hydrogen, normal hydrogen, it does not have the isotopes that we need for fusion. Uh, deuterium and tritium, they are rare isotopes. Of course, one is uh, much more rare than other one. And we haven't reached a point where we can just take, you know, electro do electrolysis, get the water, uh, get hydrogen and do fusion with it. We haven't reached that a point yet. And the electronics needed for this is very complex, not to mention material engineering is the biggest hurdle of this is because I already mentioned everything built here has to handle insane amount of neutron flux and that can destroy things from the inside as in on a molecular level it can destroy things. So building something that can last uh, for 10-20 years is very crucial. 
many things you have to also understand this presents as i talk to you is the largest gradation of temperature existing in the universe because one side basically the side that contains the electromagnet is at near zero near absolute zero as in like minus 230 degrees celsius and the core side where the plasma is it's at 15 million degrees celsius which is hotter than sun's core and it's also hotter than uh, chronosphere of the sun the reason why we need to go that higher is simply sun is getting the added benefit of gravity gravity is doing the crushing gravity is doing the main aspect of it the temperature is not the crucial part the gravity is that is crushing it so badly that uh, uh, before the temperature even reaches very high it starts to fuse already so that's why the cost is the crucial aspect of this technology this is why i don't see fusion becoming the next power source it could happen but simply because if you go to a government like let's say india is also investing a lot of money into this and that uh, tokamak reactor that is being built as of now for a large scale uh, study india is also playing a crucial part of it and that neutron uh, base plate is built in uh, bangalore basically in india russia is also contributing a lot into this china also so suffice to say all things considered all analysis i have done as of now comes to a conclusion that is ludicrously expensive like we haven't even built this and the projected cost is already uh, 10 to 30 billion dollar and that's for a 500 megawatt plant like if you spend that much money you will get like a gigawatt size uh, solar farms or gigawatt size uh, wind farms so basically at the end of the day money talks so here this is kind of weak so what do we expect in the future well at best case scenario first experimental trial actual reactor that is connected to the grid that can handle fluctuations should happen in 2050 hopefully i will not put my money on it but hopefully second the if humanity is to progress any further actually become power independent as in like you know we don't have to worry about solar or anything like that we have to have the ability to use normal vanilla hydrogen not some freaking isotopes of that the reason for that is those isotopes even though we have enough of it mining them requires uh, not mining as in like filtering filtering them out is very expensive process and not to mention they will run out at uh, 1000 years so we only have 1000 years of reserve so we have to figure that out that how to use normal hydrogen uh, before that now the reason why i'm making this video is that i think there is a hope that as i already mentioned temperature is not the key to everything you, either you can compress it such a way that it uh, uses the compression force to bypass the coulomb barrier basically where two proton basically do not want to hit each other because they are both positively charged that is there is a barrier like if you exceed that barrier basically that's why we are heating it up so much so that overpowers it so once it touches it your fusion is done so to make sure it touches either you make it very hot or you do what general fusion link in the description below they are trying to do i am hopeful for that is simply because they are using what's called plasma uh, plasma injection basically they have a lot of piston they will inject the plasma and uh, the plasma is not already fusing it's there it's normal it's super easy to make they will compress it they will compress it using this pistons as you can see this is a small scale version and once they compress it this compression area that you are seeing is not a vacuum not like uh, tokamak reactors what it actually is is a liquid metal basically either lead uh, molten lead basically so they will compress that and due to that compression the fusion will happen and it will give energy to the liquid metal that way they also bypass the headache of how, uh, dealing how the hell they're gonna deal with neutron damage so basically that neutron is being absorbed with by lead much more effectively and because they are circulating the lead they can add new lead if lead get destroyed on a molecular level or it gets radioactive they can simply siphon it off from the reactor so general fusion i am more hopeful for that because they have cheap design inherently you cannot go to a small country or a developing country and say give me 500 million dollars or 50 billion dollar i'm gonna give you a power plant that barely gives you one gigawatt of power so cost parity is crucial so best case scenario we get our, uh, our first reactor in 2050 and hopeful i'm hopeful that we'll have cheap design i am putting a lot of faith in general fusion design link in the description so this was my presentation on nuclear fusion i hope you liked it or learned from it in that case please like if you don't don't worry about it dislike it leave a comment what you want to see in the next episode of future friday and subscribe press the bell icon as i make video every day and as always thanks for watching